Hey, Lone Winners, it's Low86 here with another video. This is a stream. And first off, before I get started, I want to say thank you to the awesome dude. Let's see what his name was. Uh, the awesome dude that actually threw me a super chat. His name is Nick Tong. Thank you very much. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about some things and linking them back to real world scenarios that have been affecting me. And the first thing I want to start off with is a couple weeks ago, I released a very personal video. And for those of you unfamiliar with the whole Hong Kong protest thing, don't worry, there's plenty of information out there. But I was talking about how it was actually affecting my family life because a lot of you guys know if you follow me, uh, a lot of my family is either from Hong Kong or they're from mainland China. And obviously they're torn. There's a, a massive divide in the mentality between those two sides of the family. And I was talking about how, you know, what a shame that is that such a you know, political divide could actually divide familial ties and friends and really push the narrative that uh, the Chi Chinese government's trying to push um, and it, it actually working. Uh, and the funny thing is, is I'm used to the hate. I'm used to the hate comments, rolls right off my back. Some of it's kind of entertaining. Uh, that being said, the Wu Maos or the paid 50 cent trolls, the paid pro CCP pro communist trolls out there um, came out in, in droves, absolute droves. And um, I couldn't believe the amount of downvotes that I received on a video where I didn't particularly take a stance on anything. Uh, I pretty much commentated on the fact that it was tearing my family apart, their personal relationships, my personal relationships, my friends that have um, you know, really gone down this pro-CCP, very nationalist uh, path. Very surprising to me. And you can see some of these comments back here. I like this one over here. What is this? Let me see if I can get out of the way of it. This one says, people like you don't deserve to talk about, I'm still blocking it, China. He is utterly rubbish, nonsense. Now, not a big deal. It's not hurting my feelings. I'm not gonna shed any tears over this, but it was surprising to see thousands, thousands of comments kind of come very quickly. It wasn't like a, a slow moving thing where they shared it around. They said, hey, look at this loser foreigner talking about Chinese politics. It was a very sudden thing. And I realized that when I looked at other content about the Hong Kong protests, if, even if there's no stance involved, across the board, there were thousands of comments on Facebook and Twitter and tons and tons of comments on YouTube as well. All from these very nondescript accounts. You can see that, that there's no avatars for a lot of these people. Um, the only one that actually has an avatar here is someone that asks me what hair products I use. Um, actually, none right now, believe it or not. I do use hairspray once in a while, but just like the $2 stuff you can buy at a, you know, a drugstore. Anyway, off topic. Now, all these comments were rolling in, and I thought it was really interesting because most of them were not personal. Most of them are just swearing at me or telling me that I'm a stupid white-skinned pig and get out of China, typical stuff but I had never seen so many at one time. It was crazy. And this is directly linked to the kind of shift in propaganda, the shift in media that I've noticed in China. Can you hit the next clip? And this is the weird thing is that 10 plus years in China, I'm no stranger to seeing all kinds of propaganda, whether it's hammer and sickles on the street, whether it's uh, you turn on the TV and they're singing pro you know, Chairman Mao songs, um, whether it's school children lining up and pledging their allegiance to the party, the Communist Party of China, whether it's you know those red, famous red and yellow banners everywhere, um, no stranger to it. It's been there since day one. Now the difference is, is that it didn't affect the mentality or conversations I would have with people. So if there was some new push about uh, let's be a more civil society, no one on the streets talking about that. Everyone's ignoring it. It's typical Chinese propaganda stuff that they've learned to ignore over the past 60, 70 years. And I found it really interesting that very recently, the Chinese propaganda has taken a massive shift because I used to turn on the TV in China and you'd see Xi Jinping in a steamed bun, or you'd see uh, you know some new park being constructed, or you'd see some orchestra playing pro-communist songs, things like that. But the new propaganda, the new stuff is actually kind of working, but it's also gone off the rails. And that's why I named this, is the Chinese government losing its mind? The propaganda has gone from very boring stuff that people ignore to state-run media taking over social media in the West that's blocked in China and posting stuff that you would see in a tabloid newspaper while you're waiting in line at the grocery store. 
and this is the I think this is the most offensive one that I've seen recently, and it was kind of timed properly around the fact that today is September 11th, um, and my heart goes out to all the people affected by September 11th. But it seems like China has been using 9/11 as a way to say that the West or American specific deserved it. Um, and they're also using it to kind of justify maybe future military action or intervention in Hong Kong. Because what you can see here, this is actually China Daily, but it's their Hong Kong branch. So if you guys don't know, China Daily is the state-run social media accounts, state-run news accounts. It goes by CCTV. Don't be duped. It can also go by CGTN. Uh, and here, like I said, their Hong Kong branch of China Daily. They claimed that there was going to be anti-government uh, terrorist attacks in Hong Kong. And they claim that they got this information from a big, huge, influential Telegram group, which is a messaging app that a lot of Hong Kongers like to use because it is encrypted. Now, the funny thing is the screenshot that they actually posted is super low resolution. And number two, it's not even from Telegram. So they claim that they're gonna burst oil lines and they were gonna set the parks on fire and start mountain fires and all this kind of stuff. And everyone just lambasted them in the comments. There's absolutely no proof behind this. It's gotten to a point where the Chinese media has always been really safe in the stuff that it portrays. Really, really calculated because they have to push a narrative that China's the best place in the world, everything's getting better, blah, blah, blah. So the news is typically really, really boring. Um, and now you're seeing stuff like this, which is just it's off the walls. It's like almost, it, it reminds me of the death throes of someone. And this is the, the crappy thing about it is that it's not ignored. This is not the kind of news or social media and stuff that, that used to be ignored because it was boring propaganda. This is the kind of stuff that really is altering people's perception of democracy, of the West, of Hong Kong, because it's the only thing that they can consume. So I would say for the first time, the propaganda is really working um, to, to completely change people's narrative on stuff, you know, maybe topics or opinions that they had a little bit of an opinion about. So I'm talking about friends that I, I talk to and have been in contact with for the longest time that have had, a, you know, a little bit of an edgy opinion about how things might be a little bit better in other places because of political freedom. Um, and, you know, people that have had honest discussions and debates with me about this, this type of thing uh, completely change. These people have completely flip-flopped. Uh, most people I talk to now are eating up the anti-West propaganda. They're lapping it up um, and actually sending me messages worried about my future um, if I decide to stay in the West because they are now consuming media on a daily basis saying that everyone in America or Europe, everyone in the Western world is facing doomsday. Everything is about to collapse. Everything is going to get prohibitively expensive. Uh, the dollar is going to tank. Um, because of the trade war, because of the fact that China is winning the trade war, uh, everything that China used to export to America will be unavailable and America will flounder. Whereas China's gross domestic product, everything that they, they make domestically is, is flourishing. All these local brands like DJI and Xiaomi and Huawei and all this kind of stuff. And you've seen the government take the side of these, you know, half state owned enterprises, basically, and really bolster them up. And this is the kind of stuff I never saw before. This is the kind of stuff that nobody cared about before. None of my friends cared about this kind of stuff before. But it's become so prominent in the CCP's narrative right now that it's become daily life conversation for the average Chinese person. So the thing that alarms me, and I'll go to the next clip, this is all kind of tied in. And this is the kind of... Um, thread I want to go on. But you see things like this happen. And this is just the group, the group message that we already did. Um, let me pull up the next slide here. I feel like I'm in a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Um, this is Kyle Bass. He was a hedge, he's a hedge manager. And he tweeted out, Clockwork Jack Ma was forcibly removed from his position, stripped of his shareholdings, transferred to five unnamed individuals with the same address, and will likely be jailed or disappeared within the next year. This is how Xi and Wang treat any Chinese that become too powerful. Now, this tweet was deleted by CGTN, by CCTV, by the Chinese government. And what happened here was Jack Ma, the CEO of Alibaba, uh, one of the most powerful men in the entire world, um, according to some hedge fund people, according to some analysts, has gotten too powerful. And they're speculating whether his resignation was on purpose or not. Now, I don't know 
where Kyle Bass got his information from. This could be very conspiracy theory-esque, uh, and I'm not going to take a stance on this, but it is very weird that these dominoes are starting to fall when China is in the midst of kind of getting egg on its face for misreporting GDP numbers and growth and very afraid that that information is going to be leaked out to its domestic populace because the worst thing that can happen, and I've, I've said this since day one, I don't think the majority of Chinese people are incredibly blood loyal to the Communist Party of China. I think that it's family first and money second, or you can flip flop those depending on who it is. Uh, but when you take one of those away, and money has just been such a staple of Chinese society growth, um, getting used to the fact that every day was, you know, you were more wealthy, you weren't like starving like your grandparents were. When you get used to that fact and then suddenly that starts to deteriorate because you're not a fully fledged, completely developed country, then it becomes terrifying. And the government is, you know, really pulling out all the stops right now in the news to make sure that they put a Band-Aid on this before it springs a massive leak. Because recently the president, Xi Jinping, can I have the next slide? Here's the deleted tweet. It's okay. Recently, uh, Xi Jinping has been pulling out some serious serious, cool, some serious uh, lines, reminiscent of Mao's era. You can see him here. I, when I was there during Hu Jintao, his era, you know, considered one of the, le the weakest leaders of China, I did not see massive billboards and posters of him getting a handkerchief tied by a school student. Uh, I did not see this kind of propaganda. It's very reminiscent of, of Mao's dictatorship eras, the cult of personality, and ironically, you know, he also looks like he's wearing lipstick, just like in all the Mao propaganda I've, I've always seen. But that being said, um, he's been pulling out language like this. He said that Chinese people need to get ready for a long march because everything is about to change. We need to start from zero. And this kind of language was thrown out by Mao when everything was falling apart. Everything was collapsing and people were losing faith in the Communist Party, which had recently taken over because there was famine. There was a, a complete destruction of nature. There were uh, completely unneeded and unwanted arrests and murders. There was all kinds of human atrocities, perhaps one of the biggest human atrocities of all time in recent history, at least, uh, under Chairman Mao. So when he uses language like this, it's very reminiscent of the, the bad old days, not the good old days. So when you see the economy slowing down, people getting used to the fact that they, they can have nice things. They can have a, you know, almost a first world life in some of these areas. It's not going to end well when the people start to suffer financially. And it all ties back to this kind of death throes feeling that I have. This whole death throes feeling about when somebody is on their last leg, they pull out all the stops. They, they stop at nothing. There is no you know, this is kind of the last resort. You kind of saw stuff like this at the end of the Soviet Union. And I'm not calling uh, for the fact that I think that the CCP is dead. I don't think it's dying. I think it's actually quite resilient right now. But who knows what's going to happen, you know, after the, the trade war has done its damage on both sides. Um, and I've said this since the beginning. I think people really need to get this idea out of their head that China is a communist country or a country, you know, labeled by themselves as socialism with Chinese characteristics. It's none of those things. The CCP and the current leadership is its just a dynasty. China's always been a dynasty. It's always been dynastical. And you can use, you know, Western labels and political uh, definitions of Marxism and socialism and communism and stuff to label China all you want. They can call themselves whatever they want, but it doesn't make it true. China's always been a dynasty. It's always had ebb and flow. It's always been up and down. It's always risen and collapsed. And this is the kind of stuff you would see in a country that's kind of, I don't know, the future is getting uglier and uglier. And I think that it actually is going to get uglier and uglier um, before anything changes for the positive. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget, I'm live again tomorrow with Winston, who's actually sitting right next to me. <clears throat> I am here. He's been running the show. <laughs> I think he did a great job. Thank Thanks. you. Um, we will see you guys tomorrow. Uh, on ADV Podcasts, so go check that out. Subscribe if you haven't already. What are we talking about tomorrow? Uh, tomorrow we are talking about how um, China is constantly crying about being treated unfairly mm. um, by the West. 
but meanwhile they're the ones that actually do the majority of the unfair treating. Right. Well, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you very much, all our winners. This show will go up right after I'm done, so um, you can check it out if you missed any bit of it. I will catch you on the next one.